Now it's time to open your mind and bend your brain because CTV's science and tech guru, that's what we're calling him now, Dan Riskin, so get used to that. He joins us for his uh, weekly uh Dose of wonderment. I like this new intro. Yeah, yeah, that's, hey, this, Dan. Is this is looking a lot. Yeah, guru. you're a that's guru. Nice. You're going to bend our minds, and it's wonderment. Okay, Dan. So no pressure, uh, but let's start here. The secret of tricking people into adopting healthy behavior: tell them it's booming in popularity. <laughs> exactly. So this is a trick that parents can use on their kids. It's a trick you might use on yourself. But hmm. it's this big question about when you know what's good for people, how do you convince them to do it? And we're social animals. And so one of the best predictors is we look around and see what everybody else is doing. You know, it's really smart to wear a seatbelt. Everybody wears a seatbelt every time they get in the car. So it's really simple for us to do that. But other behaviors that are very healthy, you don't see as many people doing them. So you're not as quick to adopt them. And so hmm. what uh, this new study shows is that if you want people to adopt healthy behaviors, and it's not already very popular, so you can't say 90% of people are already doing this, you got to use language like, this is booming in popularity. Ah. It's three times more popular than it was last year, even though three times, don't tell them this, but three times is really, it's 3% of people and it was 1% of people. Mm -hmm. Don't tell them the actual numbers. <laughs> Just say it's three times as popular. And in a bunch of studies, they were able to show that if you want to get people to do things like eating fruit and vegetables or other healthy behaviors, getting more exercise, you can use that kind of language and it really does work. Yeah, so I should be telling my sons, hey kids, you're going to have like incredible riz. You're going to be so drippy because all the kids are brushing their teeth like three times a day exactly. without their parents asking Something them. like that. Right, yeah, <laughs> right. The, the number of kids brushing their teeth has gone. I mean, the, the, the thing yeah. is you want to anchor it in actual data, right? Mm. The, the, if you could always lie, yeah. but yeah. that's, you know, you want to find a way to do it without having to tell a lie. Okay. That ties into the next topic. Yeah, it really does because people's BS detectors <laughs> are badly calibrated. I love this. This is, you know those things like you see like those workplace, like there's a picture of a lion or something and then it says something like, a wet person does not fear the rain. And you're like, yeah, that's true. And sometimes they're true, but sometimes uh. they mean absolute hogwash, right? <laughs> like, so if I say wholeness quiets infinite phenomena, it mm. sounds right. like sounds it means deep. something, but it actually yeah. doesn't mean anything at all. No. And so they did a study where they showed people a bunch of these things. And they said, does that mean anything or is it complete baloney? And they asked this to a bunch of people. And the neat finding from this is that the people that think they are the best at doing it are actually the worst Whoa. at doing it. And the people that are the worst at doing it are the best at doing it. And it's, a, it's another piece of this Dunning-Kruger <laughs> effect where the uh -huh. people that are worst at something actually think they're better than average. Mm. And so uh, when it comes to detecting BS... Uh, we're not calibrated properly. It's kind of funny. Hmm. Yeah, that's very I kind funny. of think I am good at it, so I'm intrigued. Maybe I'm bad at it. I don't <laughs> right. know. I, I know, I know. Okay, I mean, in this you job, I kind of feel like one. I need you to have a pretty good detector. Is, yeah. You tell me if this is BS or not. You ready? I'm ready. Your teacher can open the door, but you must enter by yourself. BS. Total No, BS. that's true. That's it, like, Jennifer's right. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Like a teacher can help you. Like you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. It's one of those things, those uh, idioms. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I'm off. That's, that's so there you go. Okay. You're, you're miscalibrated. Okay. I, I was actually, okay, okay. we'll move on. Uh, maybe it's the unhealthy food I've been eating because it's robbing me and all of us, it seems, of a good night's sleep, Dan. Yeah, this is another thing about, you know, another reason to get people to eat healthy and yeah. do healthy things. A uh, new study out of Sweden where they got uh, 15 volunteers. They did it was a two-week experiment. For one week, they ate really healthy food. And for the second week, they ate really high-fat, high-sugar food. Mm. Same number of calories, but just the quality of the food was different. And then at the end of each of those weeks, uh, they, they basically went into a lab and, and slept overnight in the lab and had their sleep monitored. Mm. You get the same amount of sleep no matter what you've been eating. But when you've been eating bad food, you don't get the same depth of sleep. You don't get a good night's sleep. And so that could be robbing you of your good mood of your ability to consolidate thoughts, of all the different things that sleep gives you. If you're not eating healthy, your sleep is not as good a quality mm. as it would be if you eat healthy. So it's just another reason to eat your vegetables. And let, let me tell you, eating vegetables has tripled in popularity recently. So you should Very definitely good. do yeah, that. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Or you can just do what I've always said, eat dessert for breakfast. There you go. That's your option as well. <laughs> Jen has her burrito under her desk. Uh, we're not BSing that, that's for sure. Neither is Dan Riskin. Dan, always great to chat with you. See you next week. Thanks, Thanks Dan. <laughs> Take care. Thanks a lot. It's an art gallery here at CP24 Breakfast this morning. Let's hand things over to Nick. Yeah, hey, Nick. This is pretty amazing, Jen, to be up close to such beautiful works of art and also such pricey pieces of art as well. You know, this Thursday, Toronto Auction House, Cowley Abbott Fine Art is going to be showcasing 
some of Canada's most recognized and renowned paintings. Of course, here, some of these are going to be valued up to two to three million dollars. So let's find out more about this right now. Rob Cowley joining us now to talk more about this. Rob, thanks for joining us and for bringing all these incredible pieces of art this morning. Uh, let's start with this one, this Lauren Harris piece. Absolutely mm -hmm. stunning work of art. The most valued piece you brought in today. It is. Just tell us about this one. It's featured on the front, uh, the front cover of our June 8th uh, auction catalog. Uh, Nick, it's, it's Lauren Harris, probably one of Canada's most famous painters. Mm -hmm. It's called Quiet Lake. So it's a Lake Superior landscape by the artist. It's been in the same collection for 50 plus years. So, and it's really never been available to the public. So this will be the first opportunity uh, for, the, uh, for a collector to have it in their home. And as you said, it's valued between two and three million dollars. It could very well exceed that. What a huge opportunity to mm -hmm. pick. I mean, like you said, Lauren Harris, one of the greatest artists this country's ever produced. Absolutely. Uh, I can only imagine what the buzz must be like in the art wheel around this. A great amount of buzz. Um, the collection that is part of that's with us right now, um, this is a one collection, one huge collection of incredible historical art. Um, it's a collection that's been waited for by collectors for many, many years. And this was a central to the collection, hung above the mantle uh, in right. the collection for many years. Stunning, so, stunning. Of excitement. Uh, another incredibly recognizable name from the Canadian art world, Emily Carr mm -hmm. as well. What, what is this piece? So this is a forest interior by Emily Carr. Uh, this work is valued between three and four hundred thousand dollars from the same collection as the Harris. They own several cars. Um, and this, this painting is also generating a great deal of interest. Obviously a West Coast uh, scene by the artist. In the fall, we sold an Emily Carr from this collection for uh, $3.2 million. Uh, and you know, when you're up close to these paintings, you can see the texture, you can yes. see the detail, and, and, and this one really draws you in. It does. What is it about the, 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 the like this is three to 400,000, this is maybe two to three million. Could you give us a sense of why there's the, the sort of discrepancy, not discrepancy, but dis disparity? I Absolutely, suppose. well, yeah. you find, so with this work by Carr, it's actually a work on paper that's then laid on canvas. And so the medium plays a huge role, whereas the work okay. by Harris is a canvas. It's also a larger work. Okay. It's also a bit more rarity um, with, with uh, canvas by Lauren Harris versus a work on paper by Emily Carr. Okay. And so that, those are two of the factors. Right, I know you've got a lot to show us, but let's get of to course. the final one in this uh, part of the newsroom here. This is an Andy Warhol, an it iconic is. image of Queen Elizabeth II. Mm -hmm. uh, give us the information on this. So this is actually one of the, I think it's the only portrait in the collection of the royal family um, of Queen Elizabeth that she either didn't sit for and didn't have commissioned but she did purchase it. And so it's actually a set of four of these that we're offering on okay. Thursday evening. Yeah. We're selling them actually on behalf of the Winnipeg Art Gallery for their acquisition fund. Lots of interest. It's very rare to find four of them together in one set. Warhol sort of did that kind of thing too, didn't he? Where mm -hmm. they were all sort of, are they all very similar to this or are they all quite uniquely different? They're similar in terms of the image. However, the coloring is different. So there's four different colors, mm -hmm. um, very popular with collectors. They trade very actively, not only in Canada, but mm -hmm. worldwide, of course. And the opportunity to get your hands on potentially, f and I, I assume they're sold as a set of four, are. Andy Warhol. That must be quite rare in the art Very world, rare. too. Absolutely. Lots of interest in, in this set as well. This is actually on the cover of the other catalog. Oh, yeah. really? Okay, Absolutely. so that, that's how promotable that is, just the fact that his, the Andy Warhol name is associated. Absolutely. And generating yeah. interest, I can tell you, internationally, that this collection of prints. Okay. And just to, just to quickly, one more time, just to touch on this, two, two to three million is the Two to three million dollars for the But with Lord this Harris. kind of demand that you were talking mm -hmm. about, this, you know, the, the people have been waiting on this collection. There's a potential, I suppose, it could go for even more. Oh, absolutely. In the fall, we sold 48 works from the collection. I believe 44 of them exceeded the high end of expectation, given the high level of rarity and quality okay. of the collection. All right, this is amazing. I know you've got more of what's available up for auction, so I'm going to let you head up to uh, meet up with Jen, because Jen is up there now, Rob, so I'll let you sort of Fantastic. walk away from me, Thank and uh, he's going to go up and greet Jen. And this is amazing. So there's Jen now. Yeah, okay. So what you're looking at right now is a painting by David Bowie, actually. I had no idea he was a talented singer, but also a painter. This this is Nailhead of Trent Reznor. And an interesting fact about this is that a previous Bowie painting sold by Cowley Abbott at auction made international headlines. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was purchased for five bucks at a thrift store and sold for over 100K. So yet again, we have another David Bowie painting. Uh, but Rob, let's talk about this first one by Tom Thompson. Yes. It's called uh, Ragged Oaks 1915. And it's absolutely stunning. Very quintessential Thompson. It is. It's actually 19, fall of 1916. Okay. So it's the final year of his life. Mm -hmm. We call it the golden year for Tom Thompson. Yeah. Lots of interest in this painting. Same collection, actually, as the Harris and the Emily Carr. We sold two uh, Tom Thompsons in the fall for this collection. One sold for $2.2 million. Wow. This work, this work is valued at between one and one and a half million dollars, but it could very well exceed that as well. Lots mm -hmm. of interest. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was actually owned by the Thompson family for quite some time before it was acquired by the owners in 71. That's right, Jen. So, in fact, the collectors who own it now, they bought it directly from the Thompson family. So, in fact, it's never really been available for public sale until mm -hmm. now. And yeah, I think it's worth exciting. noting that Thompson did probably about 400 or so oil paintings yeah. on these kind of small wood panels. So this is right. quite unique to own a piece 
like Without this. A doubt. And one, yeah. of, one of our country's most popular artists, definitely. And um, there's a major exhibition coming up this summer as well of yeah. his work. So it's really popular. sad that uh, this artist died at 39 years old before yeah. the Suddenly. forming of the Group of Seven. That's right. We did lose a major artist. Major force, yeah. uh, but from one artist to another, mm -hmm. I had no idea David Bowie painted. Most I listened to know. Space Oddity. Right. I can sing all his songs on karaoke. Yep. But this is a, a painting of his friend Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails. Who he toured with and also mm -hmm. recorded with. And as you as you said, we um, we actually set the global record for his work with the work that was discovered in Northern Ontario at a thrift store and sold for one hundred eight thousand dollars. This work's valued at thirty five to fifty five thousand dollars and will be sold on on the, uh, Thursday evening. Yeah, and the reason why this one's so special is because it contains kind of a bit of the lyrics from the song "Hurt." Right? right. You can kind of see it if you zoom in. Yep, along the bottom there. At the bottom, yeah, yep. underneath nail. That's fascinating. Okay, and how much do you think this one's going to go for? Thirty-five to fifty-five thousand. But again, there's lots of interest in the artwork. Also, given, of course, the figure that it that it represents and, and the painter, there's a lot of interest. So we'll see on Thursday. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very exciting stuff. I can't wait to see uh, who gets to claim these uh, lucky paintings. Absolutely. Okay, Rob. Thank you so much. We're going to hand things over to Nick now again. Nick. Definitely a big day in the city of Toronto, that is for sure. Luminato is kicking off today. It, of course, is one of the city's largest arts festivals, bringing together the best cultural and contemporary works of art. And this year, something really special, it's really special. The main moving exhibit is a walk with a mall, making her way through the city. Joining us now is the Luminato Festival's director, uh, artistic director, Naomi Campbell. Naomi, thanks for joining us here in our parking lot this morning to talk about Luminato. It's a festival so many people look forward to every year. What's it been like putting this year's festival today? This year. Um, well, it's, I mean, it's been as usual. It's, it's uh, really exciting. It's hectic. Some of the work we've been talking in, we've been in conversation about for six or seven years. Mm -hmm. There's a number of shows in the festival that we were planning to do during the, in 2020 or 2021 yes. during the pandemic and that they've, they were, they've come to fruition. And then some works we've been uh, just talking with in uh, just for a few months. So okay. it's a real range. And we need to acknowledge this incredible work, this walk with a mall, this journey of a mall. Tell us about a mall. What is this about? What are people going to be seeing because it's Amal just is a is a, tw a 10 year old girl she's a 12 a 12 foot tall puppet of a 10 year old syrian refugee she's come to toronto she's come to canada for the first time she's actually traveled to uh, 13 countries and uh, 90 cities over the last two years and um and she's going to be um in toronto until sunday in uh, on 14 different walks in different parts of the city how big is it that the first omal's first trip to canada is here in toronto for luminato oh it's enormous it's such a privilege and an honor she's a really remarkable and important character um, and uh, a beautiful work of theater and also social justice. She tells the story of, oh, here she comes. Wow. She's walking for, um, hi. Can I touch? Good morning. Wow. That, it, it's just incredible. <laughs> I mean, it's very moving to have something so large representing something so small at the same time, but with such a big story. Yes, and, and, yeah, and she has big emotions, big feelings. She's very natural, as you can see. Mm -hmm. and, and there's just something about um, the way she moves, the way she looks at us, that, that, that creates empathy yes. in, in the audience and, and really um, makes us think about what it is to be a child who's displaced in the yeah, world. The blinking, the gestures, yeah. the eyes, the mouth, it is quite remarkable. Jen, of course, is uh, going to take over now. Jennifer, quite a moment here. It's surreal to be beside 10-year-old Amal right now, and I want to be speaking to one of the puppeteers responsible for bringing Amal to life. Ash Wingfield, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for uh, you've been part of this journey for a while now. I can't imagine 13 cities, uh, 13 countries, 90 cities. What is it like, you know, being part of this effort? Because I'm sure there's a lot of coordination involved and, and practice, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so there's three puppeteers that are yeah. on here at any given time. Uh, in each place we're going, we actually have nine puppeteers puppeteers that switch wow. in and out of different events okay. because obviously she's a lot of work you know um, but we do a lot of practice just about how do we breathe together as a unit mm -hmm. how do we tell her story 
Um, but when it's just the three of us in here, you know, we use a lot of breath cues. Uh -huh. um, but often it's just how does she reacting to what's going on in the world? Yeah, you can really see it in her facial expressions, just the subtle movement of her hands. And I'm sure it's very emotional when you're on these walks with her and you see how people react to her as a symbol of hope, uh, as, you know, this representation of refugee children. What's your own emotional reaction been like oh on goodness. this journey? Um, it's one of the most incredible things to see how people react to her. Mm -hmm. She has such a presence and such an emotion when she's walking through these cities. And sometimes you see these kids and they come up and yeah. they're just like, bawling or you see other refugees wow. and they're in here and they're bawling. And Amal's curious. She's looking into our newsroom right now. This is where Nick and I sit in the morning and you can just see the scale of how big Amal is next to our newsroom window. She's obviously got a curiosity. We want to bring our kids to the newsroom to show them what it's like. So maybe next time Amal can come inside. But for now, she's getting this vantage point from the window. And you know, Bill's also, <laughs> of course, got a great vantage point to sort of take in the sort of size and scope of Amal this morning. Uh, just incredible to see here and Naomi if I could kind of bring you back into this conversation here the representation of a mall I mean just so powerful uh, what are, what kind of reactions are you seeing from people or have you heard about uh, from around the world as she interacts with Bill here well um, she attracts people obviously Any, anybody who just is, encounters her at all is going to get uh, is going to wonder what's going on is going to follow her is going to watch her interact with other people sometimes obviously as you've seen she, that <laughs> she comes right up and talks to you yeah. um, and, and and watching people watch her is one of the most amazing things about it um, because she's she evokes feelings in in the in the um, you know the sternest of folks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, mean, she, she's, it's very emotional. Yeah, uh, I mean we have to sort of remain relatively emotionless yeah. in this job, or generally we try to. But th it's quite powerful, isn't it, Jen? Mm -hmm. To sort of sort of be in her presence and then to be here looking at this and just <laughs> everything that's happening right now is really just yes. remarkable, impressive. So how long again will Little Amal be here? She's here until Sunday the 11th. She makes about three appearances a day in different parts of the city and tomorrow she starts in Scarborough and mm -hmm. then she's at U of T okay and then um, tomorrow evening she's in Regent Park and she'll end in Young Dundas Square on Sunday at some That's, time right? um, yeah actually yeah. she has and her last one is at the waterfront, waterfront. Yeah. Okay. okay well we're gonna say goodbye and good morning to little Amal very great to meet you this has just been Aww. a great experience thank you so much thanks for coming Amal good luck goodbye. Welcome yeah. to see Toronto. you later. Goodbye, see you Amal. later. See you at Union Station at yeah, five o'clock. Off to Union Station, indeed. and everyone's okay. welcome to join in this Absolutely. walk. Absolutely, everybody is yeah. welcome to join. Okay. Naomi, thank you so much for introducing oh, us. Appreciate this. Thank off you. to Union Station, Amal. What thank a shot you so that much. is as Naomi approaches uh, the CN Tower as well. One of our landmarks. That's incredible. Beautiful. Oh my goodness, puppies and Pilates. What better mashup is there than that? Well, the guide, uh, the dog guides of Canada are teaming up with Family Guard, Walmart and Downward Dog for free Pilates classes as part of a campaign to support training dogs to become dog guides. Joining us now for a look is Maria Galindo from the Lions Foundation of Canada uh, Dog Guides. And of course, I'd be remiss if we didn't introduce you to these Fabulous and super intelligent dogs. Maria, can you can you remind me this this is uh, this little guy is Zap. Zap. You've got Yemi, who Yemi. is the little black lab. <laughs> He's off in the distance. Yeah, and we've got Victor as well. And Victor. Uh, Victor's in the house too. As yeah. Well. Okay, so tell me uh, before we get into this initiative, tell me a little bit about the importance uh, and how it works with the Lions Foundation of Canada and, and uh, of course in training these dog guides and and how much work that does take. So it's a lot of work. Each dog is. $35,000 to uh, breed, train, and, and pair with someone with wow. a disability. We do this at absolutely no cost to the applicants. Uh, we, they come from all over Canada. They come to the foundation and they train with these dogs to learn how to work with them and how to become a really good team. It is so incredible. My grandmother had retinitis pigmentosa and was very reliant on, on the help, especially of a dog guide like this. Um, is, is there... What is the need like out there for these dogs? The need is extremely high, so every school is experiencing a high demand for these dogs. The more people learn about what they can do, the more they want them. Um, so the more support we need in terms of fundraisers and donors, um, that's what we need. Perfect. And that is a great opportunity to introduce you to Dana Gray uh, from Downward Dog. Uh, let me know a little bit about how you uh, became kind of partnered with this initiative. So um, essentially they had reached out and sort of 
came up with the idea of doing puppies and Pilates together, which I thought was a great idea. So, yeah, we, we got it all together, and, uh, yeah, here we are. <laughs> I love it. It's an important initiative. And since we have the mats out in front, why don't you yeah. just teach me a position okay. <laughs> since we're here with the dogs and talk a little bit about how people can get involved with this part of the initiative for the, for the classes. Yeah, so essentially while we're running the classes, um, they can come by and do a donation, and then that way we can start supporting the dog guides. That's so. absolutely wonderful. So we are, yeah. sorry, I'm leading you here. That's okay. We are getting into all fours. Dogs okay. love yeah. when you do this. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start with, it's called bird dog so essentially. Okay. You want to think of your left toes, your left leg sort of kicking back. I'm going to do really, really slow. Really slow, nice. okay. Like that. Yeah. And then bring it back. Oh, you're giving me nice. things I can Let's do. do I like that. Okay, okay, so we'll do the, the right. One? Yeah. And what is this good for the So this leg, is really nice. We're going to start to think about your core. So we want to reach your right foot arm forward okay and now you want to find a little bit of stability so we're kicking the left foot back I love this nice. okay so as Dana continues to guide me in this <laughs> uh, can you let me know a little bit about the initiative as uh, to how to raise money because you were talking about these each take thirty five thousand dollars that's right so we're here with Family Guard and um, thanks to them one training session will be provided uh, whenever someone purchases a Family Guard brand product at Walmart Canada all through June uh, as I mentioned, these dogs are very expensive. Uh, we're also looking for foster families. So anyone yes. out there, if you want to foster one of these little guys, please let us know. Go to dogguides.com. Um, but what you're doing is a really fun uh, demonstration of what's going down next week. And next week we have, we're partnering with Downward Studio. And thanks will the to dogs be there or is it this? Yes. Oh, no, the dogs, dogs, yeah, will, dogs will be, be there. Yes. Oh, will they just be judging me and my bad technique? I mean, dogs don't judge. That's <laughs> the beauty of it. They don't. They don't. They're no? so cute. Yeah. Um, and so, what is the training that goes into involved? You said it costs thirty-five thousand dollars, but when to be able to for them to get to the point where they can help uh, people with disabilities, what goes into that training? I mean, it's quickly? a lot of training. Yeah. We have highly skilled instructors that go into it. The foster families train the dogs until they're about fourteen months old basic training and then at that point the dogs comes to us and we train in one of the seven programs and they learn how to fetch items, bark for help, um, you know, bark for a fire alarm or alert Super someone important. to a fire alarm, guide people who are blind or visually impaired or help children on the spectrum. There's a wide range of disabilities we cover. This is such a great initiative. Can you just let me know how people can find out more information and how to get involved even if they just want to volunteer and donate? Yeah, so for Dog Guides, you go to dogguides.com. For, to sign up for the free yoga classes in Toronto, it's downwarddog.com. That's okay. great. Oh, sorry, I'm so distracted by this cute okay. dog. But hopefully you got that email address. It's such a great initiative. Thank you for being in Thank here, you. Maria, Dana. Thank you for having Have us. Have a great day. Bye. 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 Riley, we've been dating for what, like a year? We can do it this weekend. Come on, it'd be perfect. Yeah, like perfectly insane. Riley, I've... I've been married, remember? Jesse stay in the country. And sex. In a really great apartment. <laughs> Think about it, all right? Billy's here. Look, I know you lost your place on the lake, but you can build a new one here with me. <sighs> oh my gosh, that scene is like from Out of Dirty well, Dancing when Baby and Patrick lesbian. Swayze are in the lake. But no, dream. this is the lake, and it returns for maybe. season two, building up on the story of yeah. Justin, a gay man who oh reconnects God, with his daughter, right. who he gave up for adoption when he was a teenager. But an unexpected love and unforeseen event changes uh, are in course for those near to Justin as well. So joining us is the star of the Prime Video series, Jordan Gavaris. Welcome to CP24 Breakfast. Lovely to have you in person. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Yeah, so you definitely look different than you do in your <laughs> lake attire and your pink swim well, cap and goggles. I'm, I'm wearing a shirt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you look pretty ripped there, so congrats oh. to you. <laughs> um, anyway, this series is so fresh. Um, I'm so glad it's back for season two. Me too. Uh, talk about the crazy events that happened because there's a boathouse fire. I mean, you're getting a marriage proposal there. Yeah, we kind of, it's like, uh, it, it was everything. <laughs> it was like throwing spaghetti against the wall for the season. Um, it... What, so we find Justin back on the lake mm -hmm. after he's been dating Riley for a year. Yeah. There's an unexpected marriage proposal. And uh, I was going to say a bit of a shotgun wedding, but thankfully I'm not pregnant. No, just a really fast wedding. Mm -hmm. A very fast wedding um, that kind of surprises everybody and surprises Billy. And uh, then at the end of the wedding, we get a runaway bride situation that results in the Ooh. boathouse burning to the yeah. ground. Yeah. So you're kind of just, you know, trying to diffuse the shame and blame onto yourself. Uh, but yeah. there are other, th I mean, this show is filled with so many dynamic and diverse characters, which I love. Um, and for the other characters, like your daughter, Billy, she falls in love with this hot tree planter. And then for Maisie May. Possibly two tree planters.
Ledgers. Ooh, okay. And then Julia Stiles' character, yeah. her Lauren Holly plays her mother. She comes back as well. So yes. talk about all that fire. Well, uh, having Lauren Holly on the show this year was just delicious. Mm -hmm. I mean, she brought so much antagonism to Mimsy, and it really makes you sympathize more with Maisie, um, which is shocking given how much of a villain she was last season. Mm. But um, it was just a, an, it's a, I mean, it's an amazing shooting experience being up in North Bay, and the ensemble is so strong. There's so many talented comics, Natalie Lashinska and John Doerr, and just like incredible actors. Um, and the, the, the writing this year just kind of took the series in an unexpected direction in that it wasn't just throwing all the characters back up on the lake mm. for more sort of succession family hijinks. It was, we have a caper um, because the entire season is bookended by this idea of who burned down the boathouse. So everybody's going to have to watch all eight episodes streaming on Prime Video to yeah. find out who did it. Yeah, and you know, filming in North Bay, just a reminder to viewers, that is not a green screen. That's a real that lake is real. that you're filming every, on. There is no green screen. Every piece of landscape is exactly as it is up there. I mean, it, it, there's, there's no enhancement. It's like prime Canadian beauty. It was lovely being up there. Wow, so does it feel like camp when you're shooting out there with all the Absolutely. cast members? Yeah, and I did not go to summer camp. I was not a summer <laughs> camp kid. I think I was more afraid of the outdoors. Yeah. Um, so this is me getting to sort of have a, a second adolescence and you know getting to make this thing that I'm so proud of with a group of people that I really love is like the experience is tops. Yeah the writing is quite impeccable especially from a comedy standpoint. Did you have any comedy training because your timing is so <laughs> good and it's so natural with Billy just that dynamic of you being her you know biological father but you guys kind of play as siblings as well. It was very it felt very like Gilmore Girls to me mm. like there was something um, a kind of sharp and fast-paced in the writing that I think I really responded to but no formal comedy training really I did I did one class I did one imp improv class at UCB yeah um, which was lovely and really taught me to that you know the biggest the biggest aim in comedy is just to go for it and fail yeah and um, you know not think which is really tough for me because I'm a big thinker but anytime I start using my brain when I'm acting, it just, uh, all things fall apart. So I kind of just have to go on intuition and then really funny stuff happens. Yeah, and is there uh, like one of the funniest lines you can think of from this season that just made you laugh when you were reciting it that yes. you couldn't get out? What Many was that times. Line? Uh, it's in the third episode yeah. and I think it was an improvised line actually where okay. I screamed to Maisie that I'm an inside cat. <laughs> What does that mean? It's she tells me that I can't sleep in the cottage anymore because I don't know there's some opals opals upset about something and I'm not allowed to sleep in the cottage and apparently I'm an in, I, I screamed just uh, like yeah. unprompted that I was an inside cat. Um, <laughs> And then later in the episode, I wind up sleeping in a canoe. So yes, it, it, we have a lot of we have a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, oh, the lines! I just burst out laughing several times. So if you want to do the same, you can catch the lake out on Prime Video right now. All the episodes. Yes. And Jordan, you do an excellent job in it. Thanks so much for stopping by today. Can't wait to watch all of it. Thank you so much.